Hello everyone and welcome back to Eat Sleep Brief. So today I I kind of did a little experiment for you guys. Um, today's video is going to be covering that little experiment I went ahead in doing. Now for you guys that are watching this video, for you experienced guys, you guys <clears throat> are probably going to know, you know, it's it's consistency more than anything in, in, in the reefing scene. Um, and that's what I tell a lot of the newer reefers. It's, it's, you know, instead of chasing a number, make sure that that number is consistent. Of course, there is certain targeted numbers we should be hitting, uh, like alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium. Um, but most importantly, it's consistency. So I went ahead and did an experiment, obviously not on, on the big 45-gallon tank here because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. But I went ahead and did a, an experiment on the uh 13.5 fluval so pretty much what i did i stopped all dosing like 100 percent dosing on the tank there was nothing uh, being done to it there was no um, water changes being done to it and i really wanted to see how much we can push the limit so in going to, into the experiment i knew the you know the most important fundamental element that was going to be affected was going to be alkalinity so, you know, it wasn't going to be calcium, it wasn't going to be magnesium, it wasn't going to be salinity. That I already knew for a fact. I knew alkalinity was by far going to be the number one element being hit. So, I, I did exactly that. I did about two, it was probably like two months, two, three, two, three months, let's say. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how long I did it for, but it was a while. It was longer than a month and a half. I believe it was about two and a half, three months. And I told myself, you know, what or how low can we really take it? I know in asking around and reading around, everybody says you don't want to go lower than like 6.9 dKH. Um, and I said, so what would happen if I go lower? Do the, Will all the coral die that day? Will all the coral die that week? Or what we have, what people in this reefing community call a tank crash. Um, now, I have never been through a tank crash but honestly, if you ask me, I find it very hard and very difficult to have a tank crash. You really have to have given up on your tank and just let every parameter go to hell. Um, but then again, I may be wrong. I've never been through it, so I can't talk about it. But one thing and one big disclaimer I do want to say is only because you are seeing me do this, I'm not recommending you do this. I did this to test it out so you don't have to. <clears throat> so... In that, I really want to ask myself, how low can you consistently run, not just for a day, can you consistently run alkalinity? So in my findings, I quickly found out a tank can run perfectly with no issues. My zoas were growing. Like there was polyps actually growing on the zoas. So I knew the tank was thriving. My cyphastria on the back wall was growing. My GSP in the back was growing. So there were a lot of different corals growing. I mean, hell, even the bird's nest I had in this tank was growing. Um, so it wasn't only getting by, but in my eyes, it was thriving. I had great color. I had growth. I had everything you would look for in a healthy tank. And I got down that number. I think the lowest I ever got it was 5.0 um consistently and no coral showed any and i mean any signs of stress so that you know really brought me back you know where you may do a lot of reading everybody says higher than 6.9 i was able to get away with 5.0 consistently now i'm not recommending you guys do this um i just really wanted to open up that window to show you guys what is possible um, not what is possible really, I guess I can rephrase that, but just how much our corals can adapt um, to parameters and, and really to specify more to especially you new reefers, how important consistency is. Instead of you trying to play God, trying to play scientist, chasing this number, just let the alcohol, like if you have a doser, let it settle. You know, as long as you're above 6.9, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, but if you are going to do changes, don't do them overnight. Let them happen on their own. Um, and just let the tank really just settle in. But obviously my findings were very, very surprising. I even reached out to a few experienced reefers. I told them, hey, what, what would be the lowest alkalinity you would ever run your tank? And they, they would all tell me, you know, I wouldn't go below 6.9, 7, 7.2. And when I showed them my readings, they were blown away. They're like, I have no 
idea how your tank is still thriving, not only surviving, but thriving and growing. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, we are going to keep this, this video here pretty short. It was really just on my findings. Um, I know I did get off the, the YouTube video scene here for a few weeks, guys. I've, uh, pretty much I'll tell you guys that there is a baby on the way. Uh, my first kid, uh, my first daughter. Uh, so obviously that changed your life a little bit. You have to paint rooms. You have to get tanks out of rooms. You have to completely redo stuff, right? So that's kind of why I've been a little bit out of it um, as far as not updating you guys on my Instagram. I'm still doing updates on my Instagram, guys. So please go over and check my Instagram. You can really uh, keep up to date with me. See stuff that you don't see here on YouTube. Quick tips. See what the next video is going to be or just re really get to follow me on a daily basis. So that's going to be it, guys, for today's video. Uh, like I said, big disclaimer. Only because I did this, I'm not saying you should do this or you can do this. I'm just saying... I got away with it, you know, it worked for a while, uh, not long term, but a decent amount of time. Um, and I did risk my whole tank, all my corals and all my fish just for you guys, just to show you guys how much these corals can adapt. So we're going to end it right here. If you guys have any uh, questions, comments or concerns, please, please, please leave them down um, in the comment box below. And for you guys that, that may be asking yourself, are you going to continue this regimen? No, guys, I'm not. I'm back onto polyp lap one dosing. Um, you know, I just want to play it really, really safe. But at least now I know that if, you know, I go away for a trip and the tank drops to like a five point something, it, I mean, other than maybe the SPS, everything else should be fine. Um, but yeah, guys, so leave your question, comments, and concerns down below. I really thank you guys for watching. If you have any, um, you know, if you're wondering or maybe you're running issues with your specific tank, ask them down below. Either me or someone else in the community can answer it. I try to do my best to answer every uh, comment. So uh, we're going to leave it here, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please uh, hit that subscription on the top as well. Hit that bell. That's going to notify you as soon as I come up with another video. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.